Welcome back you legends, I'm Dr. Cal, this is going to be a very quick update, so let's get right into it. I'm not even going to talk about the stock market map, I want to jump straight into the daily chart for the S&P 500. So recently, legends, we had this uh, pullback break below the 20-day moving average, then we developed these double uh, inverted hammer candles, we got a counter trend rally following that, we broke above the uh, 473 resistance, then we pulled back, then we pulled back to the middle of the candle exactly like we expected, then we had a continuation. Now we are in the final stages of this counter trend rally and in the final stages of this entire, entire uptrend that began back in October. So why do we say that? Well, we have a bunch of bearish indicators that are now warning us the market is stopping. I want to start talking about first about the PPO and the RSI. Both have been making significantly lower highs as the market was forming slightly higher highs. Now, based on the price action yesterday, we had a gap fill of that uh, target for 75.4 was our target. We finally filled the gap and we're now waiting for the CPI data that's uh, about to come out uh, this morning. So there are two main scenarios and outcomes uh, based on what happens with CPI today, PPI tomorrow, as well as big bank earnings. Scenario number one is that we get a reactive rally in response to CPI and we get kind of a blow off top looking formation as the market pushes beyond this major resistance level and finally completes a massive, massive bearish divergence on the daily chart. So for a bearish divergence to complete legends, we need a higher high on the daily price action and a lower high on both the RSI and the PPO. We first had a bearish cross down on the PPO as we broke below this bearish ascending graduate. This is a bearish topping formation. We broke below it. We continue to sell down, broke below the 20 day, and we're now getting a counter trend rally. Nearly always, nearly always without exception, these counter trend rallies fail. They produce a massive, massive bull trap and a top, and then we continue lower. So scenario number one dictates that we get a blow off top. We complete this triple negative divergence. This PPO tags the slow moving average here. The blue touches the orange, then get rejected before the weekend and then next week we continue to sell off all the way down to 458 by the end of january early february the second scenario dictates that the market sells off immediately in response to cpi so we don't get a reactive rally instead the market immediately begins to sell off today and again tomorrow uh, friday in response to ppi and big bank earnings so again two likely outcomes number one we get a reactive rally that proves to be a massive bull trap gets rejected and then complete a triple negative divergence one two three one two and this is the the third and final negative divergence and then we continue uh, the sell-off back down to 458 by the end of the month. The second scenario is that the market will immediately begin to sell off in response to CPI if CPI surprises to the upside. If you want to keep up to date with all of my work and all of my analysis on a daily basis, you can join our trading community on Patreon. Simply click pay annually if you want to go for the annual discount, then click join. It's about 35.75 bucks a month, but you have to pay annually if you want if you want this discount. If you don't pay annually, the payment will be automatically canceled. If you want to try the uh, Discord community for a month, you can go for the monthly membership at 55 bucks a month. You don't have to sign up for anything. These videos will, will always and forever be free. However, if you want up-to-date info, if you want to have access to all of my indicators, all of my charts, and if you want to know exactly what I'm buying, when I'm buying it, what price, when I'm selling every single trade and investment, this is the only way to get access to all of that. Once again, Legends, thank you so much for your legendary support. Now, why do I only have two scenarios and both and both of them really dictate that the market is stopping and begins to sell off? We have a plethora of bearish indicators that I want to uh, discuss with you. And, and one of those key indicators is the 50-day breadth. Up top is the 50-day breadth for the S&P 500. And it looks at 
the percent of S&P 500 stocks that are trading above the 50-day moving average. And what do you notice, Legends? It is rolling over, right? This is the S&P 500 down below. We had three consecutive green candles. And then response continued to break down. It has continued to move lower. In fact, yesterday, we formed a higher high on the S&P 500 versus uh, uh, Monday. All the while, the 50-day breath made a lower low. So not only a lower high, but a lower low. So it broke below the low of Monday. This is a clear bearish divergence, and it tells us that market internals are collapsing. Only a handful of stocks are pushing the market higher. This tends to happen uh, always, legends, near the end of any uptrend. You see fewer and fewer stocks participating in the rally. Recently, some of those big names include NVIDIA that has broken out and rallied, but the majority of S&P 500 stocks have actually been moving lower, not higher. In addition to that, if we take a look at the NASDAQ uh, oscillator and McKellen Summation Index, we got a bearish cross on the Summation Index last week. The oscillator has continued to print red reading despite this counter trend rally. Another major warning sign that this counter rally is a bull trap. It will fail and it will suck in a lot of liquidity. And big money will take advantage of this counter trend rally to actually dump positions. Again, if we take a look at what the smart money is doing, smart money is up top, dump money, the S&P 500 is down below. The smart money uh, yesterday uh, developed this doji, this red doji candle. Nothing, nothing like the green candle that we got on the S&P 500 yesterday. Again, a bearish divergence is developing here. Very likely, legends, this bearish divergence will again result in additional downside as soon as we get past CPI and PPI. If you don't get a sell-off immediately in response to CPI and PPI, there is a very high probability that sell-off will actually start next week. In fact, even if the S&P 500 rallies all the way to 480, so even if it makes a new high, a new 52-week high, Smart Money is still telling us with this bearish divergence that it's actually selling, selling into this counter trend rally in the S&P 500. So what would that look like? Well, we would make a new high on the S&P 500 and high yield bonds will once again make a lower high, completing a bearish divergence and uh, beginning that sell-off or continuing that sell-off again next week. So this is scenario number one, market moves higher, forms a triple negative divergence, creates a 52-week uh, new high, uh, high yield bonds fail to do that, and that will be another indication that smart money is actually selling, not buying. Same thing if we take a look at the 50-day breadth it has continued to break down and it's telling us loud and clear the market is topping. This final debt cap bounce will be a trap. and We're bound to break these lows that we formed last week in the coming weeks as the market continues this uh, sell-off. We're not done yet, legends. Look at this. This is the bullish percent index for the S&P 500. That's in the middle. Below that is the RSI for the bullish percent index. Up top is the S&P 500. I want to highlight this. Notice the market had this counter trend rally. It moved up. But what happened with the BPSPX? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It moved sideways. It topped, crossed below 70. That nearly always, always calls the top in the market. And we get weakness, weakness, weakness and we get a new downtrend. So the bullish percent index is telling us the market is stopping. Big money is not participating in this rally. We're getting the exact same reading from uh, Brett. Same exact thing, making lower lows versus the market making higher highs. Again, same look on smart money. The smart money has failed to make a new high or even match the prior high as the market is now contesting this prior high and potentially now getting ready to form a, a final rejection and final uh, div negative divergence before it continues to sell off. Okay, what about the VIX? The VIX has done something very interesting. I covered this yesterday in the trading community. This is the VIX up top, down below is the S&P 500. The VIX has actually bounced off this 
um, minor support line. It broke below it yesterday. This tells me that more likely than not, Legends will get the first scenario, not the second. That means market moves higher, gets a blow off top. The VIX moves all the way down to 11.9 or roughly 12 to backtest this prior uh, level of support. Then we get a huge double bottom with a massive divergence on the PPO and that calls the final top in this entire October to January uptrend. It is now ending according to all major trend indicators. That includes summation index, breadth, smart money, the bullish percent index, the CPC and PC buy and sell signal have both triggered sell signals as of uh, 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 the end of last week. So everything is telling us the market is stopping. Be careful as the market sucks in liquidity to only turn back around and break this higher level of support at 468 on the S&P 500. So what about the CPI? So let's take a look at the Fed, the Cleveland Fed now cast model. Down below is the forecast for December. That is the reading that's going to come out today at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. We're looking at 3.3 for the headline number, 3.9 for the core number. Is that the expectation? Well, no, that's actually higher than the expectation. This is the consensus 3.2 versus 3.1 last uh, or the previous month. That's for the headline number. And for core inflation, 3.8 the expected. And we have 3.9 the forecast by the Cleveland Fed. So if we get a 3.9 reading and 3.3, that means we'll get both a headline and a core number that's above expectations. Not only that, it will also mean that the headline number is above it is now rising it is above last month's reading and sellers will be very excited to use this as an excuse to begin selling again if we don't get a reactive rally to cpi today ppi and big bank earnings tomorrow that means we begin to sell off immediately if we get a reactive rally that is almost certainly going to be a bull trap in the final topping uh process for the s p 500 Okay, now, not only are we looking at that, we're also looking at the NASDAQ potentially. The NASDAQ could potentially fail to make a uh, a new high versus the December high. That is 4.12.5. Uh, that could very well happen. That will also mean that the NASDAQ will also form a bearish divergence against the S&P 500 if the S&P 500 uh, goes on to make a new high. That will mean new high for the S&P, lower high for the NASDAQ, lower high for the smart money, and lower high for breadth, the 50-day breadth. Why is that important? Well, Legends, because if we take a look at the summer top back here, Legends, by the end of July, the S&P 500 went on to make a new high. This is the S&P 500 in blue and black. It went on to make a new high in this final counter trend uh, rally. And if we take a look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ went on to make a lower high. That, in fact, confirmed the final top in this entire uptrend. We're now looking for pretty much the same kind of setup. Lower high or equal high on the NASDAQ and then a higher high on the S&P, completing the final topping process for the two and a half month long uptrend that began at the end of October last year. Now, I want to end this video on uh, uh, this note with the XLF, S&P 500 Financials uh, ETF. And I want to point out this very clean and clear ascending, bearish ascending wedge. This is a topping uh, technical structure. We are almost certainly now forming the final top. I've discussed this in the last video. We often get this Q4 into Q1 rally in the financials. These rallies tend to fail and we get a sell-off into earnings. And what do we have? We do have big bank earnings coming out Friday morning. That means we'll very likely see the financials topping Friday as uh, big banks report earnings. I do expect a top even if we get a reactive rally to those earnings. I expect that to be the top and for the financial sector to begin to sell off 
at least back down to 36.2, this prior area of consolidation, and more likely than not, all of the way down to this prior level, 35, and even lower to fill this gap at 33.9. So three downside targets, 36.2, then 35, and all the way down to 33.9. What does that look like from current levels? That looks like a 10% correction. That is in line with what I'm expecting. If we take a look at the PPO, it is continuing to roll over massive bearish divergence as the XLF has continued to uh, try and contest higher highs. PPO has continued to roll over and move down. Again, in terms of economic events, legends, today, CPI in the morning. Be very careful. Bull traps will be laid all over the place in reaction to CPI today and PPI tomorrow, as well as big bank earnings uh, Friday morning. Again, if we get a bullish close uh, to end this week, that will almost certainly mean we'll get a negative week next week and we'll get continued selling into the end of the month and into March all the way down to fill the gap at 4 40. That is our expectation for the next couple of months. That's all I have for you today, Legend. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, wow!